Hey, this is David Hamburger doing another installment of my True Fire blog on the genealogy of blues songs. Uh, it's Sunday morning here in Austin where I'm filming this. And um, I've been thinking about this tune a lot. There's a lot of links posted on YouTube to a bunch of different versions. There's video of some, there's audio of others. So uh, you can check them all out. I'm going to try to deconstruct a little bit of what's going on. Basically walk you through some of the um, particular parts of the Robert Johnson version, since that's only, obviously you've only got audio for that. So I'll try to I'll play through a version of it, of his first chorus, his introduction, and uh, just um, then go back and break down a few of his moves, and then just talk about what's going on in some of the other footage and some of the other audio that we've got uh, that's available. So let's dig in. Here's um, Roughly speaking, the first chorus of Robert Johnson's version of Sweet Home Chicago. Basically, on the four chord, I played it a little differently from what good old Robert does. But basically, it starts with this turnaround. And what you're doing is you've got your pinky on the 12th fret of the high string, and your middle finger or your ring finger on the 12th fret of the fourth string. And then you're going to pinch with your right hand. The reason I'm not doing any close ups today is because I'm just doing one camera and I've got, uh, I want you to be able to see the right and the left hand at least a little bit. So, I'm using my thumb and I tend to use my ring finger on the high string and then my middle finger on the second string and my index finger on the first string, but you can do it how you like. You can't actually see Robert Johnson doing it, so who knows how he was doing it. But you're going to grab those two 12th fret strings and then you're going to pinch once and then repeat the next three times with your ring finger. Then go down one fret on the fourth string the same kind of right hand move. And then actually for the last chord, Robert Johnson goes to the top part of an E7 chord. So a bar across the top. Four strings at the ninth fret, but then second finger gets the uh, tenth fret on the high string. So. And then into some version of a B7 chord, the sort of Mel Bay B7, <clears throat> though I don't think Robert Johnson learned it from Mel Bay. Um, ring finger on the high string, second fret, uh, sorry, pinky on the high string, second fret. Uh, ring finger on the third string, second fret. Middle finger on the fifth string, second fret. So second fret, every other string. 1st, 3rd, 5th strings, index finger, 1st fret on the D string, only the bass is played now on the 6th string, and some kind of vague brushing or moving around on the high strings, and then the thumb playing that low root, which is actually the 5th of the chord, but it's the bottom note of the chord. Then into the classic shuffle pattern. And so, your palm muting over here, probably. <laughs> and there goes my cell phone. Very un 1930s. Sorry about that. But it makes you know that I'm really here doing this. Okay. So, index finger on the second fret to the fourth fret. And then this gets moved over to the fifth and fourth strings. So, open fifth string and then second fret on the fourth string. And this time, going up to the 4th fret, and then the 5th fret, and the 4th fret on the D string. And then, 
there's, it's hard to tell, but basically it sounds like doing a little hammer on back onto the E chord is what Robert Johnson is doing. And so he's shuffling his way through the E and the A chords, and then going to that 5 chord, that B7, that open B7 chord. <clears throat> and then his turnaround is the railroad lick, what a lot of people think of as the train whistle lick, which is high string, first fret, uh, first string, sec seventh fret, and middle finger doing the eighth fret on the second string and then doing this little pushy quarter step bend while brushing both the high string and the second string. So that's what's going on there. And then a little open position lick at the end. And then and that's taking this shape, fourth fret on the Second string, third fret on the so fourth fret on the third string, second fret on the third string, and then open high string, sliding in from the third fret to the fourth fret, and then pinching the second and third strings, and then grabbing the high string open, going down one more fret, and then hammering on to the first fret from open, on the third string. That's kind of blitzing through what's going on, but I wanted to just give you the, the big picture so that we can talk about some of the other things that some of the other people who play this are doing. Um, if you check out the, um, the Johnny Shines and the Robert Lockwood videos, I think Johnny Shines is the one, he plays the intro, Robert Johnson's intro like this, but he doubles it up, he plays it twice as fast, and he gets into it with a little slide move, he slides in. He's thinking of it as this kind of E-shape. And so he slides his bar in. He's barring, but he slides from the 8th to the ninth fret, but he just picks the 2nd string and slides 8 to 9. Then with his thumb, picks the 4th string at the ninth fret. That's his little pickup phrase. So 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1. And then he grabs the pinky. And then... goes, I think it's Johnny Shines, goes to, instead of playing B7 down here, he plays it here. So he takes like an A7 shape and just slides it up to the fourth and fifth frets and doesn't use, and doesn't worry about the root. He just, so he's grabbing like the, his thumbs on the fourth string and then his index, middle, and ring finger roll across the top three strings. So that's kind of cool that he doubles it up and then goes to this chord. And he also does these kind of fancier licks on the open E. And he manages to keep this lick going while he keeps uh, the thumb coming in. So he's starting on the B, open B, second fret on the A string, back to the open B, hammering on from open to first fret on the third string, and then the high string. And he's doing that all while keeping this going. So it looks kind of like this. Fast, it's... But slow down. things drop out in the bass, but basically he keeps it going by doing this shape here, which is the 4th fret on the A string, 2nd fret on the 3rd string. Everything else is open. Check it out. So he's got the open E and the open B string, and then pinches 4th string, 5th uh, string, 3rd string on that new shape back to the open B, hammer on to the open, from the open G to the first fret, and then grab the high string with the, with the low string. It's pretty cool. You could actually, on the hammer on here, you could grab the fifth string at the second fret. So you're going basically from this shape to this shape.
plays a few other different variations of that, but that's kind of the coolest one. And then um, Robert Lockwood Jr. does some of the fills like that also. And these guys both uh, do different things to the, the turnaround. The train whistle lick. Um, you know, it's interesting. Johnny Shine speeds up the intro, but then when he comes to the... I think he slows it down kind of like that. So he, instead of doing eighth notes, one and two and three and four and... He does one, two, three, four, one, something along those lines. And, uh, Robert Lockwood Jr. just kind of keeps the thump going. He does one of those great things where uh, it shouldn't really work, but you know the rhythm, the time's all there, and he does it with a lot of conviction. So you don't really care the fact that he goes to this chord. And he just kind of plays like the bottom two strings, kind of open, just like not really playing much of anything except time, and he's muting it a little bit with his palm, probably. So he just goes. You know, he's just kind of keeping junk going on at the bottom, but. Again, he kind of slows down that leg too. Um, so uh, those are some of the acoustic version highlights. And then moving over to the electric guys like uh, Magic Sam and, and Freddie King, for some reason they both do a totally different intro. They do both do something along the lines of... And like I mentioned in the text part of the blog, the great thing about these two guys is they're both like these watershed... Chicago electric blues guys, but you can tell just watching Freddie King anyway. I'm not, you know, I don't didn't dig up any footage of, of uh, Magic Sam, but you can hear in Magic Sam's playing too that when Magic Sam does the intro, he starts off with the lick, and there's a rhythm guitar player in the band, but he also then jumps down. You can hear him coming in on the shuffle figure, so he's thinking of it kind of like an acoustic guy, like he's it sounds like he's playing with his fingers on top and then going down to play with his thumb. And everybody who talks about Magic Sam says he was a guy who played with his fingers, so we can kind of take that that's, take it that that's what's going on. So uh, Freddie King does a very similar intro, and you can actually watch him do it. You can see the slides that he's doing. They're both sliding into the tenth fret on the second string, first fret on the high string. He's playing triplets. One and a, two and a, three and a. And then maybe doing a little bit of a bend, so there's a little bit of that train whistle lick shuffle down at the bottom with the thumb. So what's cool about these guys is you can also hear Magic Sam doing these kind of licks. I'm kind of murdering the way that that lick sounds this morning for some reason. But, but the, I love this open position lick that he does out of an A7 chord when he's on the 4. So he's hammering on open B to the third fret on the high string, so there's a little A7 shape, and then repeats it, then hammers onto the second fret, and then comes down the pentatonic scale, E, e minor pentatonic scale. There's a few different variations. There's kind of like the Johnny Shines lick. Freddy's goes straight down, uh, Magic Sam's goes straight down. And then what they both do for the four chord, when they're soloing or playing fills, that's like the way F Magic Sam gets back from the four to the one in one of his solos in this version. So they're all coming out of a, they're coming out of an A shape. And I say they because I'm going to also talking about a Freddie King thing like this. So it's an A chord shape. Uh, and it's an A chord up at the fifth fret and sliding into the sixth fret of the third string and then over to the first fret on the second string. Repeating that and then coming up to the seventh fret of the high string and coming down chromatically, which is super cool. So seventh fret, sixth fret, fifth fret, pinky, on the 8th fret of the 2nd string, back over to the 1st string, back to the pinky, and then 1st fret on the 2nd string. And you can hear that on all 
all these like 50s records that these guys were probably going to see those guys or hanging out with them or whatever it is. The backup guys who played with Muddy Waters and Helen Wolf were doing these kind of moves too. And Freddie King gets back to the uh, Magic Sam repeats this. of the second string, first, first finger on the seventh fret of the high string, ninth fret of the high string, and then back to the uh, ninth fret of the third string, or maybe it's just the open high string, but either way he's coming back to an E chord. So here's the E, here's the A, there's an, and then back to the one, so there's your E chord. Now that's kind of it as far as how far uh, Magic Sam takes it. Freddie King does it for the five chord too. So, uh, then he takes it down to the open position. Not sure exactly what he's doing when he gets to the open position. There's a lot going on at that moment. But if you go to around two minutes and fourteen seconds. On the, on the YouTube clip of Freddie King, you can hear him, they go to the stop time, and at the end of the stop time course, this is how he gets out with the five. Something like that. I've got one time really slowly. Is a bunch of things going on with uh, Sweet Home Chicago. Try them out. Um, just, you know, even if you grab some of these new turnarounds or a few of these licks, you'll have some things that you can use on any kind of blues in E, obviously, and you can even transpose some of them, especially these last couple licks that I've been showing you. So um, try those out. I hope you enjoy them.